Hello and welcome to my new video tutorial of Stitch Buddy. Um, Stitch Buddy is an embroidery editor for um, machine embroidery files on macOS and on iOS. And I'm Matthias, the person behind Stitch Buddy. And today I will introduce some of the new features of Stitch Buddy version 2.16 and especially about merging designs. So in the past it was possible to combine several design files into a single one by using the clipboard. So you had to select stitches, copy them into the clipboard, change the design file and pasting them again. And with a new version of Stitch Buddy, I have a new feature there for combining especially complete designs, which I will show you now um, in this lesson. So let me start Stitch Buddy first. I will present a sample file. Some of you know this um, interface. So maybe I will touch some more features in the next minutes there, some uh, change things, but Currently, I'm not interested so much in the user interface, but into creating a new design, which will combine three existing ones. And as you can see on my desktop, I have design A, B, and C. And I want to merge these letters together into a single design. So I'm creating a new file, which is just an empty one. And I will start with um, merging the letter A into this design simply by drag and drop the file from the finder. Um, it is the letter A is positioned exactly at the same um, position it was in the original file, um, which is the center. So I would like to move the letter A to the left and doing it all only with a horizontal alignment, I will hold the shift key while dragging the letter. So with the shift key, it's just that I can only move this letter horizontally or vertically, so it's easier to align. So that was the letter A. Proceeding with the letter B, just the same. Um, but the letter B in the center is fine for me, so moving on with the letter C, just drag and drop. And as you can see, the new um, merged stitches are already selected again, so I just pressing shift key again and dragging the C a little bit to the right. So that was easy, wasn't it? So now I have a new design which is not already perfectly centered, so I'm selecting the center menu um, toolbar item. I can also use the menu item as well to center the design. Um, and I would like to change the colors of these letters. Um, as you can see, currently Stitch Buddy don't know about the um, file format of this new design. So there is no thread colors um, from, from a specific vendor already selected and there's no file format in the bottom of the screen um, reflected. So what I first do is I'll change the thread files to a new uh, chart I have introduced with version 2.16 as well. It's it's Builder PB40. So and now I will just tap on each thread and use a different color for it, just selecting some by random. Maybe some, some red. So as you can see, I've changed the thread chart or I have different thread colors here. And um, currently it's still not clear which is the target file format for this design. So I will just save the design with a name ABC to my desktop. And as the Jeff file format was pre-selected in my save um, dialog, you can see it's now a Jeff 1.0 file. It has a hoop, uh, which it was selected appropriate to the, the design size. And um, yeah, I have now, as you can see on my desktop, an additional file ABC and also the thread information in a separate file as well. So 
That's one of the new features with Stitch Buddy 2.6 drag and drop design files from the Finder into a new design or into an existing design, of course, uh, which is much faster and easier than opening several uh, files in parallel and copy and paste stitches. Uh, works perfectly if you want to combine complete designs. Um, another thing which has changed, some of you might have uh, realized it is the way designs are zoomed. Um, I've changed the zoom level um, in a way that now 100% zoom is a kind of fixed scale, where in the past 100% means a design is perfectly fitted within the window, um, which could be achieved by clicking on the equal sign toolbar item, which is still possible. But now, as you can see, the scaling is not 100%, it's 235 in this example. I can still zoom in or zoom out using the toolbar items. It's just that the design scale is not depending on the design size. And when I, for example, move a letter or move a part of the design, it's not changing the zoom level, um, which is still the same. Um, let me undo this change. Um, so the handling itself hasn't changed. You can still zoom in, zoom out. You can fit the um, design size, the zooming of the design to be more precise exactly to the window. And you can select zoom levels just as you like. Um, it's just that the, the, the amount of zoom of scaling here is, is a little bit different. Um, Another thing which has changed with zooming uh, is especially for the people of you using a MacBook with a great touchpad. Now you can use your touchpad to zoom in and out as I'm doing at the moment, um, which is pretty nice, I think. So that was zooming. Also a little bit changed with the new version of Stitch Party. Um, another thing I would like to show you is the export or dialog. Uh, exporting in Stitch Buddy is basically saving a file. Um, saving a file to a removable uh, media like a USB pen drive. Um, embroidery machines, especially Genome embroidery machines, are requiring specific destination folders and sometimes it's a little bit difficult for a user to know which machine needs which folder. So I had a export function in Stitch Buddy, which supports you in navigating to the right folder and selecting the right file format. Um, it's, it's not perfect or it was not perfect in the, in the user experience. And I um, have to admit that I'm a little bit limited due to um, Apple's App Store regulations. But nevertheless, I worked on the export dialog and make it a little bit more user friendly from my perspective. So. Um, I can access this dialog via the menu item, it's file export, or you can um, add an, um, a corresponding toolbar item into your toolbar, which I do now by just customizing the toolbar and dragging export, for example, at this position. So when, when I'm um, using this export function, I will look basically as a save as dialog. Um, some of you might have a comp um, compressed view, which can expand by clicking on this triangle. Um, what's different in this dialog is it will only accept valid destinations for a specific machine. Or, and I can select this machine here at the bottom of this dialog. And I have a little guidance uh, with, with uh, information text at the top of the screen. So for example, if I'm using here Gen Genome MC, 500e machine, the text reflects that I have to navigate to a folder slash amp slash amp f on my flash drive. Um, for this machine, there are two different file formats valid, DST or JF. I, I keep it with the JF file format, which is also enforced by this dialog. So if I'm now changing to one pen drive on my Mac and I try to save this file in a different folder, I will receive an error message, again pointing out I need to save it to the MPF uh, file structure. 
Um, as you can see, the, the pen drive doesn't have these file and folders yet, so I can create a new folder. The first one I call it AMP as requested. I already changed into this AMP folder, uh, but you can see I have to use a subfolder which is called AMPF, so I created an additional one. Uh, sorry, um, actually it's not case sensitive, but nevertheless I, I keep the same cases here. So now I'm in a folder on my pen drive, which is called transfer, called another folder AMP and a subfolder AMPF. So it looks good. Or let's keep the file name. For example, it's a Jeff file. I, I, I'll export it. Well, that's all. So as I said, it's basically the same function using the save as dialog with a little more guidance and limitations. Um, if you know the file form, uh, the folder, destination folder of your embroidery ma machine, you can use the finder and just drag and drop the Jeff file. This is pretty fine. And um, you might have noticed that I also included um, browser um, machines. They are much easier to handle than the Genome machines or transfer to Genome machines because all browser machines, at least I know, are just using the topmost folder of a pen drive, so called the root folder, and uh, you can just export by, by using the pen drive and that works as well. So um, that was the changed export dialog in Stitch Party version 2.16. Um, maybe a little gimmick, some new feature introduced with this version as well. It's supporting the dark mode of uh, Mac OS Mojave. Some of you might know it, or actually I don't use it my own, but uh, that's uh, a personal preference. So with um, um, Mac OS 10.14 um, Mojave, you can use in the system preferences preferences, a general setting, which is the appearance, a dark appearance, also called dark mode. And if you change to dark mode, you can see that even in Stitch Buddy, the, the menu bar has changed, the, the background colors have changed. Um, so the complete appearance of this app is ready to be used in dark mode if you want to. Um, with this, I will end the session for today. Um, thanks for watching. I would appreciate your comments uh, either uh, on this video or by email, or if you like to uh, leave a rating or a review in Apple's App Store, it's much appreciated. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me at info at stitchbuddy.de. And well, Enjoy the new features of Stitch Buddy 2.16. Um, tell your peers about your experiences and have a great day.